The Fusion 360 team has added sheet metal to Fusion 360. If you haven't played around with it yet, I did a video over on the NYC CNC channel. I'll put a link in the description or I'll add a card. So look for that and go check that out if you haven't used any sheet metal. But one of the comments that constantly came up was, how do you cut um, on an angled face if you want to design something, if you want to design around something in your design? So I thought I'd come up with a little example that shows how to do that and it mixes in some other things as well. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and save my design and I'm going to call this sheet and I'm going to call this sheet metal normal cut. We're going to go ahead and save that and then I'm going to right click and create a new component and I'm going to name this component to be sheet metal. Now let's go ahead and do some drawing on here. So I'll switch over to the sheet metal environment. I'm gonna sketch a rectangle, center point rectangle. I'm gonna put it on this top plane. I'm gonna drag this out. And the size that I want this to be is eight inches by 18 inches. Go ahead, and enter there and stop that. I'm gonna go to my home view and I'm going to create a flange from that. I'm just using one of the default rules. Click OK. When I add three flanges around the outside, so I'm going to choose the flange tool, grab this edge, this edge, and this edge, and I'd like to drag this up. I'd like a four inch tall flange. And I'll click OK. I'm going to add one more flange over to this face, and this face is going to be 5.5625, but the angle of it is going to be 45 degrees. The initial release of Fusion is missing some of the tools that we may expect. It's like something like the corner seam where I could just make these two pieces of material match. So let's look at a trick that we can do for right now to get us by. So to do that, I'm gonna switch back to the model tab. And from the modify menu, I'm going to choose move or copy. I want to move a face. The faces that I want to move are going to be that face. And I'm going to move this face right here. I want to choose the rotate option and select an axis. The axis that I'm going to rotate about is going to be that axis right there. And the rotation angle is going to be 45 degrees. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now you can see that we've closed up that gap. We're not perfect on the heights, but good enough for what I want to show you guys how to do. So there's one little trick showing how we can use push-pull or the move command to take care of some of the deficiencies in sheet metal in the, in the initial release. All right, so I think that looks good for the sheet metal piece that I want to start out with. Now what I want to do is I'm going to put a structural member that goes through here. So I'm going to right click and choose to do a new component. And the new component, I'm going to call this um, tubing. Go ahead and enter. And I'm going to create a rectangular sketch on this plane, centered about the origin. And this is going to be 3.5. I'm going to make both of these sides equal. So we'll choose the equal command. So I want a 3.5 by 3.5. I'm going to go ahead and stop the sketch. And I'm going to extrude this. Now, I want it to be symmetric. And as soon as I start to pull this, okay, so it did the new body as I wanted to. Sometimes it'll, it'll change to a cut. I don't want it to be a cut. I want this to be a new body. So I'm just going to make sure it goes all the way through my part. And there, that, that'll work right there. So go ahead and click OK. Again, I could make tubing in multiple ways. Um, I'm gonna fill it this. I'm gonna grab each one of the corners by hitting F on the keyboard and then selecting the edges that I wanna fill it. That one and that one. And the radius that I wanna do on these is gonna be a quarter of an inch. So we'll click OK. And now I'm gonna shell this out. So under the modify, choose shell. I'm gonna click on the faces that I don't want anymore and then tell it how, how thick I want this to be. Okay, so let's activate my top level design. So here I have my sheet metal part and I have my beam going through this. And what I want to do is I want to cut the sheet metal so there's clearance around there. 
I don't want either one of these parts to move, so I'm going to right click and choose ground, and I'm going to ground the other one. So now those are both fixed in space. I'm going to turn off the sheet metal and activate the tubing. And I'm going to switch over to the patch workspace. And here I'm going to go and create a, I'm going to create an offset surface. I'm going to choose that as the surface that I want to offset. And I'm going to offset it 0.0625. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Now I have an offset surface off. I'm going to activate my sheet metal part again. Or turn the visibility on, I should say. I'm going to expand out my tubing and I don't, I'm going to go to the bodies. I don't need to see the major body anymore. I just want to see the surface body now. And we'll activate the sheet metal in this case. So now we'll go back to the model tab and we're going to split the face. If I try to just cut this through, what we'd end up with is a cut that would be at a, it would, it would go straight through. So that this face, instead of being a normal cut, it would be an angled cut when we flatten this out to the flat pattern. And that's generally not going to work for laser plasma water jet cutters. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use this patch command and we're going to split a surface and use the push pull command to get the clearance that we need. So from the modify menu, I'm going to choose that I would like to split a face and the faces I would like to split are the outside faces wherever this structural member is going to go through. So I'm going to split all the outside faces right there. Want to know what the splitting tool is? The splitting tool is going to be this entire, this entire body. I'll just click it from the browser instead. And that's what's going to split our part. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now we no longer need to see the tubing part. We have everything we need in the sheet metal part. I'm going to right click and choose press pull. I'm going to grab the surfaces that we're going to press pull on. So all the ones that we just split. And I'm going to enter a negative distance of minus point one. This is a minus point oh nine eight or point oh nine eight thickness sheet metal part. I'm just going to enter minus point one and go ahead and click OK. Now you see we have a cut going through this part. However, if I switch back to the sheet metal and I choose modify, create flat pattern, and I click on that face and choose OK, you'll note that all of the edges are square. There are no there are no edges that are crooked. And so when we go ahead and exit this flat. We turn on the tubing, I'll shut off this surface and turn on the body, activate my top level design. Now we can look and when we come, we'll see that we get the 16th of an inch clearance around that structural member going through there, yet we still maintain normal cuts everywhere for the flat pattern when it goes to the laser or tube cutter. So here you can see how that, that surface is normal perpendicular to this face right there instead of being cut straight through. So the initial release of sheet metal from the Fusion team is pretty good. It's missing some of the tools. They'll come. But we're not stuck. There's some other things we can do to get around some of the deficiencies. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I'll try to put up more videos on a more regular basis. And if you have any questions, please ask them below. Thank you.